Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to our Python programming series. In today's video, we're gonna dive into the fascinating world of for loops. These handy structures help you repeat a block of code for a given number of times or over certain data types. Let's get started. First of all, for loops are fantastic for iterating over data structures. To demonstrate this, let's use lists and tuples that we've previously discussed. Let's create a list, let's call it list one, and fill it with fruits, apples, bananas, and cherries. Now, let's make a tuple. Top one, populated with random numbers, two, six, 10. To print every value in our list, we can employ a for loop. Our syntax is for item in list one, colon, print item. What's happening here? The for loop iterates over each item in list one. It assigns the current value to item and then prints out the item variable. So when you run the code, you'll see apples, bananas, and cherries printed on your screen, each on a new line. Let's do the same thing for our tuple, tub one. If we run for item in tub one, colon, print item, it prints out each number in tub one, showing that for loops work just the same for tuples. Thus, for loops are brilliant for navigating through a data structure and performing operations on each item, be it printing, modifying, or extracting information. Now, for loops aren't just for data structures. They are excellent for iterating over a range of numbers. Though we'll explore functions in depth in a later video, for now we'll use the range function. Consider this code. For i in range, and then in parentheses, 0, 10, print i. This prints numbers from 0 to 9. Key point to note here, the range function does not include the end index, just like we saw with slicing in lists, so it stops one before. To print the numbers from 1 to 10, you'd use range, and then in parentheses, 1, 11. That way it would print out one through 10 inclusive and it wouldn't count 11. Moreover, what's really exciting about the range function is that it can skip numbers. For instance, you can write for i in range and then in parentheses zero comma 11 comma two print i. And what this does is it'll print all the even numbers from zero to 10. The two here is the increment factor it's added to the current number to get the next number. So we can see here printed out 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 10. Here's a fun exercise. Try printing the first 10 multiples of five. Solution, for i in range, and then in parentheses, five comma 51 comma five, print i. This starts at five, increments by five each time, and stops at 50, giving you the first 10 multiples of five. Awesome. Lastly, nested for loops, a for loop inside another for loop are quite powerful. Let's say that we wanna iterate through the first five numbers, you know, our zero, one, two, three, four, and then multiply each of those numbers by zero, one, two. We can go ahead and do this using two for loops. We can nest one for loop inside of the other. So we can say here, for i in range, 0, 5, and then initialize a new for loop inside for j in range, 0, 3, print i times j. And so what this does is, it'll start with the first value, i being set equal to 0, and then it will iterate through each value of j, 0, 1, 2. And it'll print out 0 times 0, 0 times 1, 0 times 2. And then it'll go back to the outer loop and increment i by one. So now i is equal to one. Then I'll go inside of our nested loop, our j loop, and print one times zero, one times one, one times two, and so on and so forth, giving you a sequence of outputs iterating over i and j. So that is for loops in a nutshell. For loops are amazing to navigate both through data structures, iterating over elements in lists and tuples, and they're also amazing to use in form of ranges going through a series of numbers, whether that's incremented by one, by a value greater than one, or even a negative value. 
And that, my friends, is for loops in Python. Thanks for listening, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.